Hey everyone, so I'm here for the NCAA Women's Lacrosse Football for Wednesday, April 17, 2024. There are a good amount of games here today. There are, there are some from earlier that happened. Here. And. You know, there are some more still to go for the season. The conference tournaments haven't started quite yet for the for the women's lacrosse. I mean, softball as soon is going to be in May for the conference tournaments. I mean, women's lacrosse is going to be about April, early May. Too soon. Uh, Okay. Let's go to High Point Wofford here. Hi, 14 all is the scheme. High Point is 8 and 5, 4 and 1 in the conference. Well, Wofford is 5 and 7, 2 and 2 in the conference. But. And there's going to be a free shot here with 7 seconds left on um, the shoot. Basically, 7 seconds left for High Point. Half of the shit. Last thing we should call this. For citizens, we try and educate the client in each day. Great kick save that was. Wofford wins the backup. Well, they didn't reset the shot clock, so shot clock violation on Wofford. So Wikowski did not, or excuse me, Welsh did not make contact with that. I thought she might have had to kick save. So now the ride down the far sideline for Ella Bartlett. Whoever gets the next goal gets the lead. Cha has come alive here in the fourth quarter. Angles a pass to the left side. Whistle and a free position coming up. Might have gotten Barger 15 in the white. And an opportunity here for Mandy Prockham. And it is 31 in the purple. Game clock stop, 4.57 to go. Gives it away, coming on high, hits off the crossbar. Wofford momentarily gets the ground ball for Ella Bartlett, but then she has the ball checked away from her. And High Point able to get the cause turnover. And the ground ball, child. Little stutter step move on the face up. Her pass left side. Knocked around all over the place. Barger with great defense. However, it leaves an ISO game. A flag is up, and High Point takes the lead. Reclaims the lead with Pia Cavallaro. Who came in with 13 goals on the year and her second of the day gives High Point the lead. Well, that's when the turnover just came back to hurt Wofford, the overplay on the defense. And you can see just one on one with Smithers, the goalkeeper. And High Point has the advantage back. 4.32 to go. Big goal for that young lady right there. The senior, 5-3 attack. Who had two assists in that 10-goal win against Radford. Over the weekend, there's a high-point team looking to run that win streak to five. And stay in contention with Mercer for the regular season crown. The overrun in high point. Got the draw control win, and now the ball comes loose in an unsettled situation. And the Panthers able to prevail here with Mandy Brockham. Well, one thing you can't do now if you're Wofford is fall behind by multiple goals, which Wofford has not done today. Barger gets called for the foul, and unfortunately, Wofford is going to go a player down, a yellow card. Assess the Lily Barch of the Richard Sophomore Defender came in number one on the conference in ground balls per game and number two in cause turnovers. 
So that means one of your best defenders just went over and has to sit down for a couple minutes. And this is exactly what you want to see if you're high point. Up by one on the road, 4.09 to play. And you're down on a plus one situation. So I guess now, if you're high point, you're going to grind down as much time as you can, knowing you've got plus one out there on the field. Treat this almost as if it's the last shot of the game. Try to burn some clock here. That's Cha, near side wing. Wofford initiates things, bringing Barrett Rowe out. That's what High Point was trying to do. Extend the Terriers' defense. Out on top to Brokamp. Three and one on Saturday. Rowe comes out to make her do something. Now, one thing we can tell you is they don't have the timing posted on the scoreboard here for the uh, penalties. But the shot clock is now down to 30 seconds. Bringing it back out on top. High Point will try to burn every second of this shot clock that it can. Far side. Rowe has the defense. The drop pass. Inside the eight. Flag comes up. And a free position coming up here for Mandy Brockham. 31. Opportunity to give her team a two-goal lead. 2.56 to go. Brock Camp today, one goal. Attack Smithers and scores. And for the first time today, High Point has a two goal lead. Absolutely huge goal with 2.54 to play. High Point now up 16 to 14. We're going to look at this again. Went knee high against Smithers. Now, if you're Wofford, time is a big time factor, and it's imperative that you get the draw control here and also hang on to the ball. Remember, 90 second shot clock. High point here in the second half has outscored Wofford 8 to 6. By the way, very consistent for high point today. The Panthers have scored four goals in all four quarters. Foley trying to chase down the loose ball for Wofford and does so to get the draw control. Her 10th of the game, a contest high. Foley attacking down the right side, shoots, and what a save that was by Welsh. Gobbled up by Eris Lindsay, the key defender. And then back to Walsh. Gets harassed a little bit by Cutnella. You see the aggressive ride now by Wofford, which is forced to take some chances. Ansley Toll moves in from the outside, but has to give up her chase at the line. 63 seconds on the shot clock, 208 on the game clock. High point with its largest lead of the game at two goals. Back out far side. Jordan Miles has had the big game for them. Five goals, eight draw controls. Now Cha. High point spreads the field here, so to speak. 37 on the shot clock, 143 game clock. And we're going to get a foul here against Wofford. And is this a free position shot for Cavalero? And yes, it is. 13 goals, 8 assists coming into this game. Has 2 assists today. Wofford cannot afford to give up another goal here. Smithers tries to stand strong but can't stop the shot. And that may just about do it. Cavalero gives High Point a 3 goal advantage with 96 seconds to play.
And what that essentially does is six seconds into this, you know, you'll have the, the shot clocks go off, but a huge goal for Pia Cavallaro, the senior attack. Had two assists on Saturday. She has three goals today. Joining her teammate Cha with three. Miles has five. For Wofford, Witkowski has four. Three for Cutnella in Foley. Two each for Staltieri and Irvin. High Point has now reclaimed the advantage in shots at 33 to 29, but Wofford needs goals and fast. Giamento drops this one to Irvin. Terriers here really have to put their foot on the gas, and that's why that's one of the top defensive players in the league. It's Aris Lindsay. Comes away with a cause turnover. Her game high fourth of the afternoon. Team leader and cause turnovers coming in. And high point starting to feel it now. Three goal lead. Under a minute to play, and the shot clock is off. Even though it continues to run here in the stadium. So High Point will extend that win streak to five, but for the first time in the previous four wins, the Panthers will not reach the 20 goal plateau. They had reached 20 in each of the previous four wins. And a tough loss for Wofford, which will drop the two and three into Big South. Five and eight overall. High point goes to five and one in the league and nine and five overall. If you're a Wofford fan, you can be proud about the way this young team performed today. And if you're high point, it's one of these games that you survive on the road. And any road win in any conference is a big win. We're down to the final five seconds. And that is it. So, High Point University wins 17-14 over a good, tough Wofford team. And we have Colgate tied with Boston University 10 all. Colgate is 2-11, 2-4 in Petri League play. Boston University is 4-9, 0-6 in Petri League play. Boston University stuff. Well, as well. Oh, no, Boston University. No, this is the first. This is now one win. That was one win in the conference play. Right? 